I watched the animated television series on 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 Channel Four as a kid in England, um, and it felt it felt different to other cartoons. Um, as a young person back then, watching them, it felt like I was watching a grown up cartoon. I think because because of the length, because of the, it, usually it took forty minutes to complete an adventure, it felt like you were sitting down and watching a mini movie. You know, your own kind of uh, adult cartoon. You know, as it were, and. Um, and that to me was important because I felt like it was mine and I felt like um, it was something special to me. Tintin is very driven. He's a very driven character. He will get to the bottom of it no matter what. He will complete the, uh, the, the chord. He will crack it and, you know, uh, he will win in the end. of the, uh, He always wins, you know. Um, and I think as, as, as a kid, as a young person, especially for me, I, uh, I always projected everything onto him. And, and therefore, you know, he was, he was my hero. We're in the middle of the, of the ocean at one point. Um, we end up in the Sahara Desert. We then eventually go to Morocco. Um, you know, I mean, those are very few of the places that Tintin actually travels in the adventures. I mean, there's a laundry list of locales that uh, he turns up in. Um, but throughout all of that, you know, th there's a very interesting journey um, between two characters, and that's Tintin and Captain Haddock. Um, and that really, for me, is the heart of the adventures that Hergé uh, created, and that's very much the heart of this, this film. Snowy is an essential character who, you know, you will feel for. He's a, he's a very funny character as well. Um, he gets into trouble and Tintin is often scolding him, and, and I like that. I like that Tintin is... he disciplines him. It, it's, not a, it's not a cute, lovey kind of relationship. It's, it's a boy and his dog. And, and um, that, to me, was always very striking from the, the comics, and that's what we've tried to do in, in the film as well. And like I said earlier, you know, Snowy is sometimes often right when Tintin is wrong. Uh, he's sometimes Snowy is two steps ahead of the game, and Tintin is lagging behind, and that, that's, that's been fun to play. I've loved every, everything he's ever done. <laughs> I've never told him any of that um, uh, because of the Steven Spielberg syndrome. It's because, you know, you feel like... Keep it professional, you know, keep it professional. Um, but it's, it's been fantastic, you know, just to see him work and, and to, to, to think of myself as that boy in the, in the, in the movie theater seeing that film and, and now to be here doing this particular project. You know, it, it, I'm the happiest guy in the world right now, you know. He was a very intelligent young kid who, you know, or felt like a kid when you're, when you're a kid looking, looking at Tintin who, um, you know, he's resourceful, he's self-reliant, he's, he's smart, he's quick. And uh, so, but, but he found himself in situations that, you know, were dangerous and it felt dangerous. You know, there was edgy stuff and, and it didn't feel like he was always going to get out of trouble. It felt like it had risk attached to it, I suppose. So I th it always had a, a, an edge of reality to it. Haddock is, um, you know, he starts off the story as a, as a total loner. He's miserable, he's pathetic, he has no self-esteem. He's he's just kind of happily getting drunk and uh, and and he is a great seaman. He has potential as a human being, but he's he's lost in this kind of self pity. And and Tintin gives him hope. Tintin fathers him. Tintin, who's the young boy, fathers this middle aged pathetic wreck of a man, and actually makes him for the first time realise that he can connect with other people again. That there, there is a possibility that you know, someone else is important in his life. And that's something he's never, never experienced. So it's, um, you know, it has pathos and real emotion in it. So when I heard that he was going to be playing Tintin, I was literally, again, it's a piece of perfect casting. He, he has the energy, he has the skill, he has, you know, he's fantastic physically, he's, he's witty, he's sharp, he's quick. Um, and he's, you know, again, a character, you know, he's an actor that brings all of himself to it. It's, it's, it's huge heart and will put himself on the line and will work really, really hard. We're f really lucky and, and very fortunate to have on board some really top end talent. Um, obviously, you know, Daniel Craig is, uh, again, a, a hugely successful, very, very talented actor. I mean, I've worked with Danny years ago in theatre and it's really lovely to reunite with him on this. He's amazing, I mean, and what he's achieved has, has been amazing. Uh, and so to have him to play Saccharin is, it, we're, you know, we're, we're pretty lucky, I think.
Stevens just you know he'll you'll do something one take yeah keep that keep that but let's just add that you know make that hold on to that but don't but but then and then try something new you just just try something that you know so it's very collaborative um and it's fun it's fun I was given the first book, um, comic book, I think, when I was about six, which was a, a gift from a friend of my parents, and I've been reading them ever since. I mean, they're, 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 um, they're great for kids, and I, I hand them out as presents now for children because they're, um, you really get sort of wrapped up in adventures with them, and they're, um, they're just uh, um, great escapism. I based them on, you know, I just sort of took that sort of English tradition of playing bad guys, and uh, tried to make it my own. That's all. I, uh, I, I you know, looked at sort of older movies, but you know, having read the books, I kind of had a good sort of idea of what the tone should be and how, 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 how far to go. And t uh, uh, St Stephen just encouraged me just to sort of push it as far as I could possibly do it, go, which was great fun. We just had a lot of fun together. I think that was really the key here was that the movie is, you know, it's a fun adventure, and I think that was really the the, the sort of that, the the atmosphere that we wanted to have on the set. So, you know, having um, Simon Pegg around and um, and Nick Frost and sort of, you know, the, the, having those two guys is sort of, a, you know, uh, just sort of livening things up and, 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 and just keeping things as, as light and as funny and as exciting as possible while we're, while we're making it. I, we laughed all the time. It's an adventure story. It's an adventure story that transports you to, uh, it, you know, the, the, the film is based in the past, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, they're, they're um, it transports you all around the world to different locations, and there, it's a detective story. It's a whodunit. It's a, it's a treasure hunt. It's a, um, it's all of the things I remember, while watching the film. I remember when reading the books that excited me, that just kind of transport you to this magical place. Hello, I'm Simon Pegg, and I play Thompson with a P. And I am Nick Frost, and I play Thompson without the P. I think Tintin's power is tenacity. You know, he's just this uh, incredibly motivated boy reporter you know he's probably 16 17 years old he has that incredible quiff which is a uh, you know <laughs> symbolic of <clears throat> moving forwards and upwards and uh, I think he's exactly that he just he's the kind of kid that doesn't take no for an answer I, I think for children reading the books way back when he was the kind of uh, way for them to you know escape into a fantasy world through a character a little bit like them Thompson and Thompson are just I think in the in the great tradition of the the sort of uh, silent movie stars such as um, you know, Laurel and Hardy and Charlie Chaplin, and, and we always kind of see them as being two sort of Oliver Hardys in a way, and they're yeah. very fastidious, and, but ultimately bumbling. But they're, uh, they work for the International Police Service and um, consider themselves to be the greatest detectives yeah. and clearly are the worst. Very bad. Stephen is a great actor's director, Stephen, and, and, you know, from what you know of him uh, from, from watching his films is that he's just a, a great director full stop because of the way he moves the camera, his sensitivity, his kind of his awareness of how to make, you know, scenes impact. But actually working with him, it's amazing how hands on he is and he'll come out and talk to us and, you know, give us ideas. And he responds very well when he's happy with us, which is always nice to get his, uh, his, his validation, you know. Um, which came the best form of which was he did a little dance at the end of one take that we dance. did. He was so pleased he did a little jig and I think that was one of the greatest moments of my professional life. I play uh, one of the bad guys, a French pilot um, who um, tries to kill uh, Tintin and Haddock, uh, you know, by shooting at them from a seaplane. And, uh, and Tintin shoots down with one shot, with one bullet, he disables our engine and uh, consequently uh, um, hijacks the plane. The books that I received in my office didn't have the tr English translation, but I understood the story without really understanding enough French to read every, every uh, uh, frame, every single panel, uh, told a story in cinematic terms, uh, in, including color palette, composition, uh, f uh, 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 figures in action, very expressive actions, the way Hergé would pose his characters, almost like he was trying to squeeze out 24 frames in a single frame and succeeding. And that was, I think, the genius of Hergé. It was a movie. Our story starts instantly. There's not a big run-up to the plot. You know, you know, 30 seconds, maybe less than 30 seconds after you meet Tintin, he already becomes interested in a model boat in a glass case for sale uh, called the Unicorn. And once he decides to buy this beautiful model, 
And he doesn't buy it because he's a model collector. He's, he's not an antique dealer. He just sees this incredible model that captures his imagination, lights up his eyes, and Snowy's. And the second he buys that model, he has entered a world of adventure. Here's Tintin, a boy reporter. He's like 18-year-old Boy Scout, almost, in his methodology and his approach. Extremely moral, straight-laced, straight shooter. And Captain Haddock, who's just reeling and falling down and acting silly and, 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 and kind of not 100% in control of his faculties. And they're, 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 they're complete opposites. Well, I was always impressed by Billy Elliot and what Jamie Bell did, you know, you know in that movie, that performance was as astonishing to me. Not just the subtlety of his acting, but the tremendous physical performance he gave, Stephen Daldry. And so I really felt that uh, he would be a really good Tintin. Peter felt the same way. And I had used uh, uh, Jimmy Bell on a, on a movie that DreamWorks had, had um, you know, made. And then Peter had used Jimmy Bell in King Kong and gotten to know him. So Peter and I both came up with the idea that Jimmy Bell would be the ideal Tintin. Yeah, one of the main attractions for me on this entire endeavor was to collaborate with Peter. I have tremendous respect for Peter, his, his, his movies, his his storytelling abilities, his, his big imagination, and, uh, and, and a lot of the pleasure of making Tintin was getting to work directly with him constantly. Unlike a lot of comic books which existed and still do exist today, which are very much based on superheroes, special powers, you know, science fiction worlds, um, the Tintin books are, are very much based on reality of the world without any magical embellishment. It's just the world that you and I live in. And this, the adventures that Tintin gets himself into when you're young, you can easily imagine that they could be your adventures as well. And that is one of the, the secrets of why they're so appealing, I think. I can see why Stephen would find Tintin very attractive because, you know, Stephen's very young at heart. I mean, that's the amazing thing about him is that he really is he's quite similar to Tintin as a, I think he's more similar to Tintin than I am as a person he he's very young at heart he's very curious he has a love of adventure and uh, you know his sense of humor really pretty much matches Tintin so in some respects I do see similarities between Tintin and Stephen himself Captain Haddock was a, a very crucial role and to tell you the truth I mean I couldn't think of anybody other than Andy Serkis um, to play Captain Haddock and Stephen had never met Andy or worked with Andy before and you know it, it's difficult to imagine Gollum or King Kong being right for Captain Haddock <laughs> because neither Gollum or Kong really remind you of Haddock um, but I knew knowing Andy as well as I did I knew Andy would be absolutely terrific.